Hey everyone, today I have another storage tech contraption. This one is a bulk storage that self-organizes. So it has a whole bunch of bulk silos over there, but those silos aren't mapped to any item right now. Um, instead, the system decides on its own which items should get mapped to a silo. And that has a whole lot of advantages compared to regular player assigned silos, because if you have only, say, um, a few hundred thousands of a certain item, then it's only going to get one silo. But if you add in millions and millions, then maybe more and more silos are going to get mapped to that item. And the even better thing is, if you remove items so that they would fill even less silos, then those silos can get reassigned to other item types later. But I'll talk more about the various functions of that later. Another uh, neat thing about this one is it doesn't have any uh, human interface. So you don't need to manually go and look for the silo that contains your items. Instead, everything here is binary coded. So what you can do instead is uh, you can decode various item types to binary. I've shown how you can do that uh, in a previous video. Then just uh, input whatever binary code you want. And then um, there's a call function over here. And if you can just press it to get whichever item corresponds to that binary code. Now, obviously right now there isn't any, but you, you get what I mean. Um, there's also another really neat uh, feature of this storage, and that's uh, lag friendliness. So the main lag causer in storage systems in general, and especially in bulk storages, is when you have hoppers that contain some items and that point into filled chests. So in bulk storages, usually most chests are full. And the problem with that is that the hopper, every single tick is going to try to put an item in every slot in here. And that's a really expensive operation. Uh, and the problem with that is when you multiply it by the amount of hoppers you have in bulk storages, then it gets laggy really, really fast. So the cool thing about this storage is every single hopper here is locked. So these ones have redstone blocks next to them. These ones have uh, lit redstone lamps ne next to them and so on. There's no hopper that's active in here. And another really neat thing is because we're using binary coding instead of uh, regular sorters, this means the sorters over here they're completely locked and they don't contain any items. So they're not regular sorters, they're just binary coded. And because of that, we can easily sort shulker boxes. You don't need some complicated shulker box sorter. You can just basically, whichever hopper corresponds to the binary code will get uh, deactivated. All right, now I'm going to go into a bit more detail of about uh, the various functions of this storage. The best way to think about a storage like this is as some kind of map interface. If you're familiar with Java, think of this as a hash map. So what a map does is it takes a key, in this case binary, and maps it to a value, in this case shulker boxes. And usually in programming, you don't really want to deal with all allocating and deallocating memory, because that's just complicated. So what you do is you abstract it behind certain methods, in this case, put, get, and contains. And the same thing happens in this storage. You, you don't want to deal with assigning silos or deassigning them. That's just boring. So you let the machine do it in, in your place. Now, the way stuff is stored in the storage is you have a bunch of silos. They can all contain a certain number of boxes, and they all have a certain binary mapping. So in this case, 10, 6, and 3. And then there's one with no mapping, and no mapping is represented by the code 0, which is a reserved keyword. Now, let's say you want to put something in the storage. Let's say... Uh, with a binary code 10, you want to put one box, then what the storage is going to do, but that's all behind the scenes, you don't have to worry about that, is going to take the first silo with 10, add the box there. And now that, that that's the easy case. What happens if you want to put a um, code that is not currently in the storage, for instance, there's no silo that's mapped to one here. Well, it's going to take the nearest empty silo, it's going to remap it to one and add the box there. And it does something similar if you have a full silo. So here, the uh, silo with code 1 is full. So it's not going to put the item there. It's going to remap a new silo and put the box there. The way this looks in-game is you just take in your binary code, so in this case, 3, and input it, and then place whatever your item is in the water stream. And then the storage is going to take care of that item and store it somewhere. There are two other methods, uh, get and contains. What get does is it simply removes a box from one of the silos. So here we request a box with code 1. And what it does it's, is it takes the furthest silo instead of the nearest. And that's because the furthest silo is usually the most uh, empty one. And then it removes one box from it. Then there's the contains method. And what contains does is it simply tells you whether or not there is a silo that contains an item with that code. 
So here contains one will give you true because the second silo contains some. But for instance, here, both silos mapped to one are empty, which means contains is going to give you false. In game, the way this looks is you input your binary code. So again, three, and there is a button to get stuff. And there is a lamp that shows you whether the storage contains stuff. So we recently put in a um, white concrete, which should be in the first silo here. And then the lamp is on. If we request it, then the lamp turns off and it's going to be in the output chest. So all this abstraction is really nice, but in order to achieve that, you need some pretty complicated redstone mess at the bottom. And basically the core part of this is what happens at the top. This is a 10 bit binary decoder that can be remapped. So I have a small scale version over here. So uh, let's quickly map it to zero so you can see. Okay, so the way this works is it's a standard binary decoder using a line of observers. The only way the signal can go through is if they're all aligned. So if you change the decoder, then it's no longer a line signal doesn't go through anymore. Um, I've shown this multiple times before, but the cool thing about these decoders is you can really easily remap them. So here we entered five, and if we want to remap it to five, right now it's mapped to zero. If we want to remap it, all we need to do is fire this at the bottom. This pushes all the stuff to the top, and now it's mapped to five. And this is what we use essentially uh, for every silo. And um, this is what allows us to remap everything. Now, there's also something else that we need, and we need to access the nearest silo that is empty or the furthest silo that contains items. And this is for the, um, the remapping or for the get functions. So the way we do that is when we want to remap a silo, we have a signal that travels on this bud line over here. So we have a bunch of redstone blocks, they bud these pistons. And this signal can only go through, uh, go through the storage until it hits a piston that is extended, then it stops and it sends a signal uh, over these observer lines over here. And that's the way we remap silos. Now we have something similar for the get function. So we have a bunch of redstone blocks here budding these pistons. And essentially the, travel, the signal travels from the back towards the front and it grabs the furthest silo that contains an item that interests us. Uh, now, once that happens, then the item is transported. Well, it's at the bottom, I guess. Uh, it's transported over here across these dropper lines, which are near instant. Uh, so there are 90 blocks per second. Actually, there's another one on top over here. And uh, the way this works is we have a bunch of rails. And because of rail update order, this one updates first, then this one, then this one, and so on. And because of that, we achieve 90 blocks per second, which is eh, pretty fast, fast enough for the storage at least it's way more compact than completely instant ones that's why i use them all right so that's about it for today thank you very much for watching uh, happy holidays and have a good day